Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a lemon frosted pound cake and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's a dense textured cake. It's buttery sweet. It has a hint of lemon flavor. And then we're going to cover it with a lemon frosting or you call it a glaze. So the first thing you need to do is to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a loaf pan. And then what we're going to do is both butter and flour our pan. So I just like to melt a little bit of butter. And then with a pastry brush, just brush the bottom and the sides. The other choice is you can um, spray it with one of those um, nonstick sprays that actually have flour in them. That's your other choice. If you don't want to do it this way, make sure you really butter because we don't want our cake to stick to the pan. And then I just have a little bit of flour. I'm going to put that in there. And then just kind of tilt the pan to kind of get the flour to coat. You can do this like over your sink. <laughs> Be easier. And then it's going to be noisy. I'm going to tap it. And there we have it. So now the first thing we need to do, it's a lemon pound cake. So we need some lemons. So you will need, just put in a bowl, one and a third cups, which is 265 grams of granulated white sugar. And then you will need one lemon. And we're going to take the zest off. So always um, wash your lemons. If you can, use organic. And then I'm using just one of these microplanes. You could just use a box grater to remove the outside yellow skin. Now you don't want to grate that white that's underneath because that's really bitter tasting. Okay, and then I'm just going to put that into the sugar. And then take, you can use your fingers or take a fork and then kind of mash the, or mix the um, lemon zest into the sugar, and that will release all the uh, beautiful oils from the skin, and it'll mix into the sugar. And I find doing it this way increases the lemon flavor. I, I, you know, I can tell because the kitchen is really strong scent of lemon here. <laughs> okay. That looks good. Okay, so now for um, your batter, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment or you could use a hand mixer for this. And the first thing you will need is three quarters of a cup, which is 170 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted butter. I prefer the flavor. You could use salted and have it at room temperature. And we're going to make like a cream cheese pound cake. Uh, which I think really that little bit of tanginess cuts through the sweetness of the pound cake. So you will need four ounces, which is 115 grams of, you want a full fat, regular, I guess you could call it, cream cheese. And again, have that at room temperature. Now I'm just going to beat this just on medium speed until it's nice and smooth. That looks good. So now I'm going to add, I'm going to, that's a lot of sugar. So I'm going to add about half and then just beat that in on about medium speed. And then I'm going to add the rest along with one and a half teaspoons, which is six grams of a pure vanilla extract. Try to use a pure vanilla extract, not the imitation ones. The pure has much better flavor. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat this on medium high speed. I want to get, you know, uh, get a lot of air into this batter. So you want to beat it for probably, you know, four to five minutes until it's really nice and light and fluffy. So this is what you're looking for. See, it's really light colored and very 
light and fluffy. So we're going to give her the sides and the bottom of her bowl. Good scrape down here. We want to make sure everything gets mixed together. And then we're going to add three large eggs and have your eggs at room temperature. And a large egg is about 55, 53, 55 grams per egg out of the shell. So I'm going to add one, beat it in, and then add the next one and the next one. So now, for our dry ingredients, I have one and a half cups, that's 195 grams of all-purpose flour, you may know that is plain flour. And we are going to sift our flour, and that just gets it a little more air in there, which gives us a lighter textured cake. And then to that, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon, two grams of baking powder, just an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda, and about a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of salt. And I'm just going to, now I'm just using a regular strainer You, if you have a sifter. And if you don't have either, you could just use a wire whisk and then just whisk everything together. And my salt granules are a little bigger. Just dump those in there. Okay, so now I'm going to add about half. And mix that in. Now mix on like medium low speed because you don't want that coming up in your face. That wasn't too bad. So now I do have a little flour on the sides of my bowl, so I'm just gonna do that by hand. Get it all mixed in. Oh, it's such a beautiful batter. And then we're just gonna pour it into our pan. Now, because, you know, it's pretty dense textured, there's, you know, a lot of butter, cream cheese, eggs, this is going to take a little longer to bake than, you know, like a sponge cake. So just keep that in mind. So, and then you could just use an offset spatula. I just got back the spoon and smooth that out. Now, um... I'll just say up front, everybody's oven's a little different, so use the baking time as a guide. I find between 60 to 70 minutes. Actually, my oven is about 63 minutes. Uh, you, you know, some ovens can run a little hot, some can run a little cool. So I always, you know, the first time you're baking a cake, check, you know, a few minutes before, like, before that 60 minutes, just to make sure. And because if your cakes are dry to tasting, that typically means it is overbaked. So, and we do not want a dry pound cake. You want it nice and moist. So, 60 to 70 minutes, you will find it rises, it turns oh, just a beautiful golden brown color. 
and a toothpick inserted into the center will come out clean. I find about halfway but after about 30 minutes I like to turn my pan front to back so it more even baking. So our pound cake is done, beautiful golden brown color, toothpick insert into the center, it comes out clean. So now what I've done is put it on a wire rack, I'm going to let it cool about 20 to 30 minutes, I want it to kind of cool down a little, firm up, and then when we come back we'll take it out of the pan. So to remove the uh, cake from the pan, just take either an offset spatula or a knife and just run it around the inside just to make sure it's not sticking. So now it's still quite warm, so I'm just going to leave it on the wire rack to cool completely and then when we come back we will make our chocolate, or sorry, lemon frosting. So now our pound cake has completely cooled so we are ready to make our frosting. So what I like to do is take the wire rack and put it on top of a baking sheet because we're going to pour the frosting or glaze over the top and just in case some drips it'll drip into the pan. So um, I'm just going to make this by my frosting by hand. I've put, you could use your uh, stand mixer with the paddle attachment, but so in a bowl, put two cups, that's 230 grams of confectioner sugar. You may know that as powdered or icing sugar. And I didn't even bother to sift it. You could, but I didn't bother this time because we're going to mix the uh, lemon juice in and it'll smooth it all out. So you will need three to say four tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice so if you have one of these just uh, squeeze it and then what I do is I have a little strainer because as you can see there's lots of seeds and we don't want those in there and and plus it gets rid of the pulp so I'm going to I find maybe uh, I'm going to start with three I want a fairly thick uh, glaze because I don't want it to drip too much down the side so just take a wire whisk and just whisk it in our arm gets a little bit of a workout here good thing okay so maybe Just a touch thick. I think I want to add just a little more lemon juice. What I like about this glaze is it kind of dries to this hard matte finish. And it looks so cool on top. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. So what you want to do is just, what I do is just pour. Now if you want it a little thinner and you really want it to go down the sides, you can make it a little thinner. This looks about right. Then just at the end, kind of see get any little spots you can just use that that looks pretty good just get a little here okay I'm gonna shake it and then as you can see yeah it's kind of I think that looks so cool um, so what I'm gonna do I'm just going to let this sit for a little bit and it will dry and become nice and hard and when we come back we will cut a slice. Okay so let's cut a slice. You can see a 
You can see, beautiful. I like how the, uh, the cake is nice and yellow, yet the outside crust is kind of a golden brown. I think that contrast is really, is really pretty. And some slices, not too big. <laughs> it's very rich. Pound cakes. They have this really nice, dense texture. And they're, you know, a little sweet. Not too sweet. Um, buttery, is rich. And I think the lemon, and then you have the cream cheese in there. That contrasts really nice to the this richness and the sweetness of a pound cake. You know, you can serve it like this, just plain. And you don't have to ice this cake. It's very nice without it. And you could also serve it for dessert, maybe some um, fresh berries, a little bit of whipped cream. Very nice. So um, you can store this in the refrigerator. I find at least a week you can freeze it. It's a great cake. Try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.